Pastora Betty, and this is Everyday Jesus, a program specially made for you wonderful kids because we know you love to worship, to study, and learn the Word of God. Now, can you do it with me? Let's say to worship, to study, and learn the Word of God. Great job, kids. So to begin, we will start with a prayer. So can I see your prayer magnets? And let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful day that you have given us. I pray that you will give us wisdom and understanding so that we will be able to apply all of the things that we will be learning today. We love you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He's the best. So right now, let's all stand up and let's worship with Everyday Jesus.
love you so much. Thank you, Lord, for loving us yes. unconditionally. Thank you. We give our lives to you. We trust you, Lord, and we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. He's the I know you enjoyed our praise and worship time with Pastor Spam and Gary. And I also know you know what time is it, right? It's our Bible story time. So please get your Bibles, your notebooks, and of course, your favorite pens. And once you have them all with you, can you help us, Laura, remember our rule time for today? Rule number one, hands behave. Rule number two, Eyes watchful. Rule number three, ears listening. And rule number four, mouth silent. Great job, kids. So for our Bible story for today, we will be opening our Bibles to Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. So kids, can you get your Bibles? And let's open it to Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. And let's read. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him and whatever more you spend. I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Wow, kids, amazing Bible story, right? Did you know that Jews and Samaritans are not actually the bestest of friends? But we have learned from the story of the Good Samaritan that he was still able to help the man who got robbed and was beaten. Kids, we should always remember to be ready to help people and that our help should always be available always to everyone. Now, can you do this action words with Pastora? Can we say, be ready to help? One more time, can we say, be ready to help? Now, can we do it the third time? Can we say, be ready to help? Yes, kids, we need to be just like the Good Samaritan who is always ready to help and ready to help everyone. Now, it's time for our question and answer time. And I know you know what to get, right? We need to get our notebooks and, of course, our pens. And you can always write down the correct answers so that once we're back in kids' church, we can always give you extra tickets for every correct answers. So are you ready? Great! Now let's go to our question number one. Who told the story about the Good Samaritan? Who told the story about the Good Samaritan? You got it? Great job. Now for a question number two. True or false? We need to be ready to help everyone. 
We need to be ready to help everyone. You got it, kids? Awesome! Now for a question number three. Who helped the man who got robbed alongside the road? Who helped the man who got robbed alongside the road? Done? Great! Now let's go to our question number four, which is always our application for today. Always remember, kids, that we need to always be ready to help and that we need to extend our helping hand to everyone. So I think that's for our Bible story for today. I hope you learn a lot. And I'll see you again next time, kids! Hi, kids! I'm Pastor Ruth and this is What's the Word? That's the Word segment. Did you enjoy our Bible story? Great! Today, let's learn some more. Let's have a math game to complete our word for today. Are you ready? Let's begin! Question number one. 10 plus 4 equals... That's right, 14. And behind box number 14 is letter... Oh. Second question. 5 plus 6 equals That's right, 11. And behind box number 11 is letter G. Next question. 7 plus 2 equals That's right, 9. And behind box number 9 is letter N. For our fourth question, 3 plus 2 equals... Good job! 5. And behind box number 5 is letter I. For our last question, 13 plus 5 equals... That's right! 18. And behind box number 18 is letter B. So we have N E I G H B O R. Our word for today is neighbor. Neighbors are the people who live around us. Hmm. They can be the people living beside your house or the people living across you. But kids, in the Bible, the word neighbor has a different meaning. In our Bible story, Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan to teach us that we are to be a good neighbor when there is someone who needs help. That means we should have the eyes to see and we are always ready to help them. Like how the Good Samaritan showed kindness to the man, we should also show kindness to those people who are in need. Now, let me show you some pictures and show me your thumbs up if the kids in the picture are helping others. Hmm, what do you think? Is the kid helping others? Yes, that's right. How about this one? That's right, good job. And how about this one? That's right, good job. They are all helping others. Helping other people is fun, right? So kids, always remember that when you have someone who needs help, be a good neighbor and help them. I hope you remember all of those lessons today. See you next time! Hi kids! This is Pastor Pat and welcome to What's in the Bible? Where we answer your questions through God's Word, the Bible. Today, we have a letter from a friend and he has a question for us. Dear Pastora, Jesus teaches us that we should always love our neighbors. But who are our neighbors? 
Are they the people next door? Or the people in front of our house? Wow, what a wonderful question we have and I think that our friend needs help. And what should we do when we need help? That's right, we open the Bible and we read God's word. Did you know kids that someone in the Bible asked the exact same question to Jesus? And Jesus answered his question with the parable of the Good Samaritan which we can find in Luke 10, 25-37. And through this story, we learn that anyone, even those we consider as enemies, are called our neighbors. Our neighbors, according to the Bible, are not only the people who live near our house, they are everyone. Our neighbors are the people we meet every day, people we see in school, church, or even the people we see in the malls. And aside from teaching us who are our neighbors, Jesus also taught us the right way in treating our neighbors. Jesus said in Mark 12, 31 that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. That means that if we love ourselves, then we should also love our neighbors. So for our letter sender, the answer to your question according to God's word is that our neighbors are everyone we meet. And Jesus teaches us that we should love them just as much as we love ourselves. So kids, every time you meet your neighbor, think of some ways that you can show your love to them. Because Jesus commanded us to always love our neighbors. So that's it for today for our What's in the Bible. I hope to see you again next time! Kids. So this is me again, Pastora Jai, and this is our teaching song segment. So for our song for today, we are going to sing Walking with Jesus. Can you do it with me? Walking with Jesus. So the song is very easy. Just look at the lyrics below and we are going to teach you this amazing song. Are you ready? So please stand up, stand up everybody, and let's sing the song together. Remember, so always walk with Jesus. So read his word and pray every day and follow him always. So that's it for our song for today. See you again. God bless. Hi kids, this is Pastor Pat and welcome to Incredible Facts segment. Today, Pastor will be sharing with you Three incredible facts from our today's Bible story. So, here's incredible fact number one. The Samaritan took pity on the man. As the Samaritan was traveling, he saw a man on the road who was attacked by some robbers. The man was stripped of his clothes, beaten, and was half dead. Oh no, what a poor thing this man experienced. But as the Samaritan saw the man, he did not pretend that he did not see the man. He looked at the man and he took pity on the man. The Samaritan took pity on the man. That's incredible fact number one. Here's incredible fact number two. 
the Samaritan took care of the man. When the Samaritan saw the man and took pity on him, what did he do next? He took care of the man. He went to him, and as he saw that he had some wounds, he bandaged it, and he poured on oil and wine. In those times, oil and wine were used to soothe and clean wounds. And the Samaritan did not stop there. He even took the man in an inn and paid someone to take care of the wounded man. The Samaritan took care of the man. That's incredible fact number two. Here's incredible fact number three. The Samaritan was a good neighbor. The Samaritan was a good neighbor to the wounded man. He not only took pity on him, but he also showed his love by taking care of him. Kids, Jesus wants us to be like the Samaritan. He wants us to show mercy to our neighbors and be ready to help them when they are in need. The Samaritan was a good neighbor. That's incredible fact number three. So, those are the three incredible facts that we have from our Bible story for today. First, the Samaritan took pity on the man. Second, the Samaritan took care of the man. And the third, the Samaritan was a good neighbor. So, I guess that's it for now for our incredible facts segment. I hope that you learned a lot, kids. See you! Hi, kids. This is Pasora Armira. Are you ready to learn a new memory verse song today? Yes, our verse for today is from Ephesians 4, verse 32. Repeat after me. Say Ephesians 4, verse 32. Very good. Now the song goes something like this. enjoy that song? I did too. Well, that's it for a memory verse song today. This is Fasora Armira. See you again next time. Welcome back, kids. So I hope you learned a lot from our episode today. So right now, it's our prayer time. Do you still remember our three prayer requests? First, we will be praying for our government and church leaders alike that God will give them wisdom and understanding so that they can always make the best decisions for the people. Second, we will be praying for our families, that God will always keep them safe, and that God will always bless the work of the hands of our parents. And third, we will be praying for you, wonderful kids. What do you want Jesus to do for you? 
As for us, you know, our prayer request for you always is that you will continuously grow in the fear and the knowledge of the Lord. You will always be productive and you will always be a blessing to the people around you. So are you ready to pray? Let's have our prayer magnets and let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful day and from all of the things that we have learned today. Right now we pray for our government and church leaders alike, that God, you will give them wisdom and understanding so that they can always make the best decisions for the people. We also pray for our families, that you will always keep them safe and that you will always bless the work of the hands of our parents. And Lord, right now I pray for these wonderful kids, that you will always make them grow in the fear and the knowledge of the Lord, that they will always be productive that they will always be a blessing to the people around them. Thank you so much, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He's the best. So that's it for Everyday Jesus Today, kids. We'll see you again next time.